Hi, I'm Jeremy with the Howard County Library System. Today we're going to be creating a watercolor. Let's get started. The first step will be to create a one inch border using your ruler. Be sure to draw lightly. Once you've created your border, next we're going to compose our subject, which for this will be a brown paper bag. The reason why we're using a brown paper bag is because of the shadows, highlights, and texture it creates. The bag also has a form that's very organic, leaving it open to interpretation. Now that we have our subject properly lit and composed, we're going to begin drawing it lightly in pencil. So you might be wondering why are we painting a paper bag? The reason is because if you've never done watercolor before, you know that it's a medium that's hard to control and that half the battle is allowing the watercolor to work for you and, and basically do its thing. So with that being said, a paper bag, its features and characteristics, you know, while they're easy to identify, they're also always like flexible and changing you know no two paper bags look the same so it leaves a lot of room for interpretation and a lot of freedom for the artist so you can make those happy mistakes and get away with it when painting a paper bag versus painting a, a flower or a building or something like that so painting a paper bag is a really nice way to ease into watercolors and get a really nice product in the end that you'll be happy with and kind of inspire you to keep going. In preparation for painting this watercolor, I'm first gonna draw a contour line drawing of the bag and all of its dominant features. Then I'm gonna lightly outline the highlights and deep shadows. This will come in handy when it comes time to paint because with watercolors, it's really hard to step back the tonal values. You can always go darker, but it's very difficult to lighten something. All right, so now we're ready to paint. The two brushes, that I'm going to be using. One is a flat and the other is a small liner. It came with this travel kit that I have. Uh, you can use whatever you have really, it doesn't matter, but the big thing is, is you want the bristles to be able to collect water in them. 
right? So if you notice, each one of those uh, bristles were about like an inch, inch and a half long. And that's something that you want because it'll collect a lot more water and then you can spread it all around like I'm doing right now. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do with this watercolor is create an underpainting or a base layer of uh, uh, basically my highlights. If you want to, what you could always do is leave those areas that you sectioned off earlier as highlights. You could leave those uh, like a stark white with the paper showing through. And that way, when it's all said and done, it'll you know look like a really bright highlight. But for this, it's a paper bag. Um, I want it to, to be a little bit yellow. So uh, I'm putting down basically a, a yellow sort of base layer. And from here, I'm going to start to work darker. So notice that I'm always gonna start to work darker and I'm not gonna try and go back. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to section off those areas so that you know where your really light highlight areas are and you don't paint over them and make them darker than you want. And you also know where your deep shadows are so that you can really enhance those in order to bring out the definition in the bag. So if you're using a a watercolor kit or tubes or you know if you're using acrylic paint um, the big thing is thin your paint thin your watercolors and you know use the water aspect of it because once like I said earlier once you get darker you really can't step it back and you don't want to make that mistake early on and then you know there's almost nowhere for you to go right so use very light colors and almost as washes and just continue to layer and layer and layer on top okay now the one thing i will say is don't layer on top of wet areas okay uh the one thing you'll notice is i i kind of started to work all over the page you know all over my subject and that is so that as one area is wet it can dry while I go and work on another area. So you don't want to oversaturate your paper, otherwise things will start to get muddy and it'll start to, you know, all the colors will start to mass together in a way that isn't really conducive to what you're trying to do. All right, so what I really want you to do is focus more on the tonal values of the colors you're selecting rather than the actual hue of the color, okay? So paint the tonal values rather than trying to match the color to the tonal values, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, by doing this, you'll basically be getting a crash course in color theory and you'll be able to see firsthand how all the colors interact with one another. And um, the other thing is that you'll end up creating an artwork with this complex and really rich color palette and your work will look like someone that's experienced. Ideally, what I'm trying to do is layer these colors upon one another until I get the tonal value that I'm looking for. 
right? And the nice thing is that once I reach my desired tonal value, you'll still see all those colors I layered peeking through and really creating those subtle details that will elevate a piece of art. So I urge you once again, don't try to paint a brown bag and match it with the colors. Instead, paint the highlights, the middle tones, and the deep shadows using the colors as tonal values. All right, so don't think of them as colors, think of them just as tonal values and you'll come out with a really nice, experienced looking watercolor.
So remember what I was talking about earlier, how you can get darker, but it's really hard to get lighter. So this is kind of what I was talking about, that, you know, you take your time and you step up those tonal values and you enhance those areas that need to be, you know, deeper tones and all the while leaving alone those areas that you've already touched and really avoiding uh, putting unnecessary tonal value on those areas. So at the further you get into your uh, watercolor, what you'll notice is that you, you really just end up enhancing tonal values. And by enhancing those tonal values, you end up giving more dimension and more depth to uh, whatever subject you're painting. It's also a good suggestion to uh, have a watercolor brush that has a fine tip on it. That way you can do those fine creases and small details. So if you do have any creases or sharp lines, you can always outline them and really define them pretty well with that fine tip brush. What you'll notice now is as we're reaching the end of our watercolor, we're gonna to start to embellish all those shadows and really increase the dimension that we have on our bag. 
by making those shadows even deeper and even darker and it's going to make everything else pop a little bit more. Right now what I'm doing is finding all those last few shadows that are on the bag and stepping them up and making them a little bit deeper than some of those middle tones and adding a little bit more dimension to certain areas. 
and this is where I think a lot of the fun comes in. This is where you really get to make your piece sort of stand out and, and really become three-dimensional. Not to mention you get to add and embellish all those little areas that you weren't able to get to at the, uh, at the beginning. Thank you. 